Welcome to another Finnish Connection episode. We're out here in the middle of the Moab wilderness doing research. We've just spotted a man out there on his donkey. We're wondering if he's the one that everyone's been talking about lately. We need to get a little closer. I think someone's trying to get a hold of me. Just one second, please. Hello? Oh, it's just my singer. She wants to sing for me. Let's listen to her. Here we are. Let me see. Yes, it's him. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. It'll make a fantastic article for our magazine. I wonder how many people today would respond to an offer if they got $10 million to get a contract that worth that much to go just to the top of a mountain and to just to stay there for a few moments and to say just a few words. I think most people would just probably just go for it. You know, it's difficult to be a servant of the Lord if our words and deeds are not in harmony with God's will. Usually, unnatural occurrences begin to develop as we choose to follow our own 
pathway. One of the weirdest passages in the Old Testament takes place between the chapters of Numbers 22 and 24, where Balaam, a wicked heathen prophet, encounters a strange phenomenon involving an angel and a talking donkey along his way to speak with the Moabite officials. During the last years of their wanderings in the wilderness, the advancing Israelites, who were then about three million strong, they inspired terror in all of the surrounding nations as they journeyed. And the king of Moab, whose name was Balak, which means devastator, Balak was not willing to meet with Israel in open battle. And so Balak summons Balaam to come and to curse the Israelite people. Balaam is not a good prophet at all. He had an evil eye and an overbearing and a greedy spirit. Balaam apparently can't curse the Israelites without receiving the Lord's permission first. Not surprisingly, God does not allow him to curse that which he has blessed. Despite all of this, the Moabite king sends more officials who claim Balaam will earn prizes of silver if they accompany him to the king to curse Israel. And so Balaam saddles up his donkey and heads towards Moab because God told him, go with them, but do only what I tell you. God sends an angel to divert Balaam's path along the way. Balaam can't see it, but apparently his donkey can. It keeps wearing off the path, so Balaam keeps beating the donkey. After the third beating, the donkey turns to him and begins to speak, asking Balaam why he keeps on beating him. God opens Balaam's eyes and he sees the angel in the road with a sword drawn. Then Balaam repents and the angel tells him to continue to Moab but instead of a curse, God tells him to say a blessing. It seems from this point that Balaam had turned to God and refused to curse those whom God had blessed. But as we see in the next chapter, even a prophet can put on a false face, and it seemed like he had repented. Balaam turns wicked again. Although Balaam could not say anything without God's permission, he figured out a way to curse Israel indirectly. But there was still time to change Balaam's mind. When Balaam began his selfish slide, God, in his great mercy, and love had big warning lights flashing all around him. They're found in Numbers 22 verses 19 to 22. The first flashing light came as the words say, stay here. In other words, if we allow sin to linger near us, it means danger ahead. The second flashing light came as the words say, but do only, which means that he was on thin ice and was beginning to wobble for his mind was thinking of the profit he would make on this 
The third flashing light came as the words say, and went with. So there he packed his bags, got on his donkey and rode away feeling high as he listened to the tunes of the Moabites. Finally, the fourth flashing light that came to him said, oppose him. Now, the Lord had to give a special high priority mission to his angel to go and stop him before he made a mistake greater than this. Oh, how the Lord loves us and cares for us. The Lord speaks to us mostly through his word. Then through fellow believers and then through circumstances and by his spirit. God usually gives us an answer. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no. And sometimes he just wants us to wait upon him. What we learn from this story is that not everyone who speaks words of truth or blessings are from God. People can repent and still live without Christ. And the love of money can cause us to do terrible things. In those days, everyone knew who served the God of Israel and who served Baal. There was a clear line between the two. But today, we ask what separates the believer from the world or what separates the world from the believer. The believer is truly in the spotlight. The world is watching them. Our enemy is keeping an eye on them. And the heavenly angels are continually watching over them. And especially our Lord, he's always watching over us. Consider giving your life totally to Jesus Christ today. For he was cursed and he hung on a cross on a hillside outside Jerusalem for us. He took our place and died to pay the price for our redemption. And so he longs to have a relationship with you. He longs to have your full attention. He longs to be a part of your life, now and forever. He's got great plans in store for you. If you just let him in. He offers an adventure that's beyond our wildest imagination. So why not do it now? Let's pray. <clears throat> Blessed be your name, O Lord God, creator of the universe. <clears throat> Thank you for your amazing love and grace towards us. I confess my sins before you. Please forgive me and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior from this day on. In Jesus' name, I pray, Father. Amen. Finally, years later, there's a battle and this hired prophet meets his end while he's fighting with the enemy side. Everyone's talking about it. However, it was God who turned this curse into a blessing. Remember that the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings is on your side. Thanks for coming along with us today on the Finnish Connection YouTube channel. Press thumbs up and subscribe and share with your friends and family. I hope that this episode has been informative and an encouragement to you. Yeah, thank you very Thanks much. A lot. See, See you, you soon. soon. Hey, Bye. hey.